Hi guys, Zach here, and welcome to the 10th unit of our Java's Wizards game course. Today what we're going to do is we're going to create ammo crates that we can pick up and essentially have a limit for our shooting. So uh, what we're doing in the game is we're going to say, hey, you can't just, you know, just shoot as much as you want because what challenge is there really? Now you can just shoot these blocks unlimited. So we're going to make ammo in the game and then also ammo crates that you can pick up and uh, supply ammo with. All right, so let's go ahead and begin. The first thing I'm going to do is go to the game class here. And at the top, I'm going to create a public int ammo. And it's going to equal, we'll say, 100. So you have 100 bullets. All right, the next thing we want to do is control when we create an, a bullet, we want that ammo to go down. So what I'm going to do is also in our mouse input, I'm going to put our game class into the mouse input so we can transfer it over through the parameters here so game game this dot game equals game all right and then in our actual game class we can just put this so now we can essentially access this ammo variable now I'm putting it right here instead of the mouse input because we're also going to be drawing out the ammo later on in a future unit so we don't have a drawing or render method in our mouse input so if we wanted to put it in the mouse input to make it easier then we would have to essentially transfer over our mouse input back into our game so we can access that variable and this is just a lot easier to put it into the main class here all right so now in our mouse input anytime that we create a bullet we're just going to say game dot ammo minus minus which is just going to subtract our ammo one each time we click all right so now let's go ahead and create the crates that we can pick up so I'm gonna create a new class I'm gonna name it crate here it's going to extend the game object and we're gonna add in the unimplemented methods just get rid of this stuff here we don't need override. All right, and then we could just go ahead and draw it. So I'm going to say g.setColor. We'll make it. We'll make it like a uh, aqua. Actually, I don't know if they have aqua. We'll do cyan. All right, and then we'll say g.fillRec xy. We'll make it just a 32 by 32 box. We'll also return the new rectangle xy 32 32. And as you can see, we're getting into a pattern here again where we're creating these game objects and just essentially, just from that, we have a bounty box, we have it rendered out, and we can do pretty much anything we want with it now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into our level uh, editor, which is paint.net or whichever program you're using, and we're going to add that into the game. All right, so here I am in the level editor, and I'm using an aqua color here. So the RGB values, the green is 255 and the blue is 255. So now I can just add these crates wherever I want into our level. So we'll add one there, there, put one there, maybe right there, and right there. All right, so now we've got crates into the level. So I'm going to go ahead and save this, and then import it back into our game. So here I'm going to delete our wizard level.png. And then from the other screen here, I'm just going to go ahead and drag our new saved file, wizard level PNG, in there. And then in our game class, in our loading the level, we're going to have to actually handle this. So because our blue and green is 255 and 255, we also want to make sure that green equals 0. And on this one, blue equals 0. Because here's just checking, hey, because our cyan color is 255, it's just going to automatically create a player and a new enemy. So we just need to add in those extra arguments. So now we can say if green equals 255 and blue equals 255 then we're going to say handler dot add object new crate xx multiplied by 32 yy multiplied by 32 id dot crate and we're all set up and we need to put one more equal sign there all right so now we've got a crate in the game if we go ahead and run it as you can see, we now have a crate, so we can pick it up. Well, we can't pick it up yet, but we're going to do that now. Just 
kill some of those enemies there. So now to collide with this, what we're going to do is go into our wizard class here. And what I'm going to have to do is add in our game again because we want to manipulate our ammo value when we actually collide with the crate. So this.game equals game. And then in our collision here, we can copy this, paste it down, and say if the ID equals crate, then instead of this action here, we can say game.ammo plus equals, we'll say 10, and also handler.remove object, our temp object. All right. So if we go back into our game class here, we're getting an error because we need to initialize this when we actually create the player. And now we can go ahead and start. So we collect it and we have ammo, but we can't actually see the ammo yet. We're gonna do the heads up display in another unit. But what I also wanna do is in our mouse input here, we wanna check if the temp object equals ID player and game.ammo is greater than or equal to one. This way, if the ammo is gone, you can't keep shooting. So now we've went ahead and created a crate into our game ammo. That's awesome. 